Okay, uh, this is the uh, first breakdown of your heli. Um, I need you to understand what we're looking at and what we'll be doing before uh, any of this uh, repairs go any further. First, I want to uh, make sure you understand that this helicopter had to have been in some kind of, uh, not a severe crash, it doesn't look like it was severe, but enough to where this servo right here, which is the right front servo, which can be either considered the aileron or the pit servo, is stripped. And I can show you, and if you listen, I don't know if this camera, if you're going to hear it, but uh, it's obvious it's stripped. You can hear this little clicking noise. And if I'm to turn this around, and you can see this servo, which would be considered either an aileron or a pit servo, you can hear the difference. You can also feel the difference in the gears. It's very smooth and it almost kind of travels to a point where you can let it go. Again, this servo you can clearly hear it's not operating correctly. Um, the rear servo, which is the elevator, uh, has an issue. It uh, locks up. It's not free on its own. Uh, I'll disconnect the ESC to the motor so we'll have no uh, no power up and turn on the TX transmitter you can see there's a transmitter turned on and we're going to give this helicopter a little bit of power and uh, want to see show you exactly what the servos do and you can hear this funny little noise it's almost like they're being overdriven that's that rear servo this one back here that you can hear how it's Notice how all the two servos on the side and the rear, they actually move, but the uh, right one does not move at all, this one. And see how that... Yeah, it stop. And it looks like here, this gear, uh, I can see right underneath here that that collar needs to be brought down to prevent this from jumping around. Should never do that when the collector's moved up. Should never move up like that. Um, so that's another little thing we'll. I'll take care of. Um, let me see if I can adjust this camera and you can see a little bit better here. Okay, at this point 
because of this, I, I don't have a lot of faith in the way it is. I can't really give you a complete description. That's the way it should be with the servo arms. Uh, these servo arms running parallel. They shouldn't have this kind of uh, one over the other. They should actually be perfectly even throughout. Um, that noise is just indicative that that's just kind of telling you that you got one of them that's completely out. Um, <clears throat> this unit right here, which attaches to your swash plate in the center, this bottom one is called a washout base. And at mid stick, and that's right right there mid stick that servo that washout base should be parallel they should be parallel with each other perfectly level um, everything else on this heli from the from that point up needs to be level including these mixing arms uh, let's see if I can get this hilly to sit still for a minute um, and as you can see there's slightly these black ones not, uh, behind this anodized uh, fly bar cage uh, they're slightly set in this position here I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up well enough Okay, those need to be perfectly run parallel to this fly bar cage. These need to be level across. And mixing arms. That will yield a level fly bar cage. And in turn, will give you zero degrees pitch at mid stick you have to have that um, in order to get proper pitch throughout the heli so that I'll take care of that for you I'll take this completely apart this head unit and readjust all the linkages get everything where they're supposed to be uh, as far as the servos are concerned <clears throat> you cannot mix the cyclic servos they have to be the same uh, speed the same torque and it's kind of hard to find one off brand or a different brand that have the exact same torque uh, I'll do a little web searching for you and I will find you they don't have to be a high dollar servo um, I'll find you a, a, a set of three and I will recommend which ones and I'm kind of leaning towards an EXI servo um, somewhere there like in the 12 or 13 dollar range um, I have some EXI servos but they're of the 450 class and they're really really small exactly the same size as, as this servo here and as you could tell um, as you can see there's there's no way let me spin this around there's no way this servo is the same size as that servo but this is much smaller these have to be of a 500 class which now brings us to the tail unit tail servo seems to work fine but you're being overdriven a little and so I will correct that also that's the linkage issue um, you can see that push rod it flexes when it reaches a certain point that's that's no good that's too much travel and, and uh, to one end which means it's not uh, properly centered um, and so 
I will uh, I will adjust that for you. Um, seems to react well. I can I can hear it reacting, and that's that's due to the uh, the gyro up top, which is uh, this unit right here. Um, it's reacting fine. So I'll set the limits on it and, and do what I can on that and get that to hold as, as, uh, as best as it's going to hold. Um, not to say it won't hold. It's, I mean, you're probably going to get some kind of drift as the, he as the heli's hovering. Um, it will stay still and and then eventually it will want to start doing this kind of number or to do this kind of number a little bit um, it's only because of the components it has nothing to do with uh, anything else uh, so as you can see your uh, you have a um, on this belt cog right in here uh, you're missing a uh, uh, the end cap of that cog. You can see the white coming off. There's supposed to be another one right here. So I have some cogs. I'll have to see if I can fit one. I'll have to count the teeth on this one to make sure that we're within that range so we can keep the same tail RPMs. Uh, otherwise, it won't be good. So I'm going to cut this one short and um, I'll upload this video to you.